All right. Hi, this is Mrs. Often, and I'm here today to talk about the introduction to logarithms. So let's say that I have this equation, 27 to the x power equals 9. And I need to figure out what value of x will make this equation true. Well, if I want to determine that exact value of x, I need an inverse operation, an operation that will take x out of the exponent and say x is equal to this. In mathematics, this was an operation that was invented fairly recently for mathematics, probably about 1600, and it is called the logarithm. It is the inverse of exponentiation. So exponentiation and logarithms go together like square and square root, like addition and subtraction. They are inverse operations. If I have this statement, 27 raised to the x power equals 9, then it means the log to the base 27 of 9 equals x. These are two equivalent ways of writing the same valued function. So when I see this expression, log to the base 27 of 9, it's really saying 27 raised to what power is equal to 9. So you want to start thinking of logarithms as being an alternate way of writing exponents. And one of the best ways to practice this is to rewrite exponential equations as logarithmic expressions. So in number one, 5 to the third power equals 125. My base is 5, so I'm going to write log to the base 5. My final answer here was 125. And the exponent that I was raising 5 to is 3. So you can see that the base of the logarithm and the base of the exponent are the same. And um, the exponent becomes the solution to the logarithm expression. In problem 2, I've taken a variable for my base, but that's okay as long as that variable is non-negative and um, not equal to 0 or 1. So I have log to the base a of a is equal to 1. And this says that a to the first power is equal to a. I think we can all agree on that from our basic rules of exponents. In number three, I've written the expression 1 half to the negative fourth power is equal to 16. So that means that the log to the base 1 half of 16 is equal to negative 4. And this is really important to know that even though I can't have a negative number for a base of my logarithm, I can get a negative answer. In my final example, I have 8 to the 1 -third power is equal to 2. Remember, 1 -third power is another way of saying the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. So, I'm going to rewrite this again because my original base was 8. I have log to the base 8 of 2 is equal to 1 -third. Now I've taken all of these expressions and rewritten them as a logarithm. I could have started out with logarithmic expressions and rewritten them using exponents. And you should practice, write down some exponential equations that you know to be true and just try to rewrite them as logarithms until you feel like you're really um, competent with doing this. And we'll do some more challenging practice problems in class. 
This is an especially helpful skill, this rewriting, if we have to evaluate without a calculator. Now what's going to happen is you're going to come into class, I'm going to say evaluate without a calculator, and people are going to say, how can I check my answer? How will I know that it's right or not if I can't use a calculator? Well, what we're going to do is rewrite these expressions from logarithms to exponential expressions. So this is log to the base 3 of 27 equals x. So that means that my base in my exponential expression is 3. Since it was equal to x, that is the power that I'm raising this to. So I have 3 to some power equals 27. Now, I can just solve this by inspection, or I can do some guesses. 3 times 3 times 3, is that 27? Oh, it is. Great. So 3 to the x equals 3 to the third, and so x equals 3. There's that one-to-one -one property for exponential expressions. Over here, I have log 20 to the base 25 of 5 equals x. So I'll rewrite this. Okay, so I'm looking at this problem. I notice that 5 is smaller than 25. This tells me that my value of x is going to be between 0 and 1. Um, so I have 25 to some power equals 5. What do I know about the relationship between 5 and 25? Well, I know that 5 is the square root of 25. Another way of writing square root is to the 1 half power. So I'll write 25 to the x equals 25 to the 1 half power. Okay, 5 is the same as 25 to the 1 half power, or square root of 25. So I got my answer, x equals 1 half. And if I evaluate 25 to the 1 half power using my calculator, then I will in fact see that I get that answer of 5. Now I think this is the most useful time. Here's that number e again, one of my favorites. Log to the base e of e to the fifth power is equal to x. Well, I'm going to rewrite this. My base is e. It's going to be e here as well. To the x power equals the argument of my logarithm, e to the fifth. And you'll notice, hey, I have e to the x power equals e to the fifth power. These exponents have to be equal to each other. So that means my answer is just going to be x equals 5. And I mean, you can go ahead and check on your calculator that e to the fifth power gives you the same answer every time you evaluate it. It's the best I can offer you right now, but we can find out more about how you could check that answer later on. Okay, now, evaluate with a calculator. The reason I want you to be able to evaluate without a calculator is because your calculator only offers so many options for evaluating. So if we take this out right now, I've got my calculator here. My calculator has two buttons on it. One of them says log, and the other says ln. So if you're calculating log of x, that's mathematical shorthand for log to the base 10 of x. So it's really saying, what power do I need to raise 10 to to get this number x? If you're evaluating ln, this is short for natural log. It's log to the base e. So it's saying, what do I need to raise that number e to to get this number, x. So I'm going to evaluate log of a couple numbers, that is common log or log base 10, and then I'll evaluate ln, natural log, and you'll see that we'll get different answers both times. So I'll start off with log of 2.5. 
And this is an irrational number. I'm just going to copy down the first four digits from my calculator, point three, nine, seven, nine. This is telling me that if I take 10 and raise it to the point three, nine, seven, nine power, I will get 2.5. I can check that on my calculator. And I checked it and I got 2.4997, which I think is pretty close. I'll do the same thing with log of 120. So log of 120 is 2.079. So this is saying that 10 to the 2.079 power is going to be equal to 120. And again, I can check that with my calculator. Now if I shift over here to using natural log, E is a much smaller number than 10. So my answers are going to be larger. So I'll have 2.5 and I'll take the natural log of that using the LN button. You can see right away, if you do this on your calculator, over here for natural log, I get an answer that is much larger than what I got for the common log, 0.9163, rather than 0.3979. And the difference is going to be even more notable when I take the natural log of 120. There I get 4.7875. So it's more than twice as big. And again, that's because E is so much of a smaller number than 10. So raising E to this power, going to have to do it a lot more times to get the numeral 120 for an answer. Okay, so we have some basic rules of logarithms that I think are helpful to memorize. So the first of these is that log to any base of 1 is 0. Now I can verify this if I rewrite as an exponent. a to the 0 power, if I raise any number to the 0 power, I get 1. a, or log to the base a of a is equal to 1. Well again, if I rewrite this, a to the first power, I'm just going to get a back again. It means that I just wrote a once. Okay. And also log to the base a of a to the nth power is equal to n. If I rewrite this logarithmic expression as an exponential expression, I get a to the n equals a to the n. Obviously both sides are equal. So these are helpful to remember. Finally, there's a one-to-one -one property for logarithms, just as there is for exponential expressions and equations. If log to the base a of x is equal to uh, log to the base a of y, then x is equal to y. So we're going to see this one-to-one -one property in action with my slide here solving with the one-to-one -one property. The first thing that I want to do is check and be sure that both logarithms have the same base. So I have log to the base 5 of 2x plus 3 and log to the base 5 of 7. Since they both have the same base, then I can make each side arguments equal to each other. So this argument, 2x plus 3, is equal to this argument, 7. And now I have a nice little equation that I can easily solve. If I solve this, I get that 2x equals 6, and so x equals 3. Over here, I again am going to check log to the base 3 of the quantity 4 minus 5x is equal to log to the base 3 of 1 plus 10x. Both bases are the same, 
So I'm going to take this argument, 4 minus 5x, and make it equal to this argument, 1 plus 10x. Okay, so if I solve, then I get 3, subtracting 1 from each side, equals 15x. And so x equals one-fifth for my answer. Now I do just want to go and check this really quickly. You can't take the logarithm of a negative number, so it is a good idea to substitute this answer back in and just make sure that you get a positive answer here because if you don't, you have problems. So four minus five times one-fifth, well that's one, so four minus one is three. Over here, one plus 10 times one-fifth, 10 times one-fifth is um, two, one plus two is three. So both sides are equal and more importantly, they're both positive numbers, so I can take the logarithm of both of them. And that's your brief introduction to logarithms.